There's over 250 different types of compounds that are produced during fermentation. What we're doing in distilling is bringing them together, distilling them down, and separating them out. Well, how do we separate them out? Well, distillation works by, because of uh, all these different compounds turn to a vapor at a different temperature. So as we heat these things up, they flash off as a vapor. Um, where's my stuff? All right, I'll break out the Crayola box here. So, one of the compounds, methanol, turns to a vapor at 67 degrees Celsius. Our other one, pure ethanol, is 78.3 degrees Celsius. Now, if I go back to my previously drawn diagram here of a pot still, So this is what the pot still looks like in my distillery. Now inside here is where we have the fermented mash. Think of it as the, the beer, so to speak, the beer with no hops in it, right? This is what we've, we've cooked our grains, we've added in yeast, we've fermented it, and now we're like, okay, we're ready to distill it. Now inside of here are those 250 different types of compounds. What we're going to do is we're going to apply some heat, right? And in my still, I do it via steam jackets. So we apply our heat. Now, all these vapors start, you know, with this is going to, let's say that this starts out at 20 degrees Celsius. Well, because distillation works on these volatility points, the points at which all these different compounds turn into a vapor, as we're heating this up, they'll flash up as a vapor and through. Keep heating, keep heating. They work their way through the still, come back down and out. As a liquid, we recondense it down from vapor to liquid and into the martini glass. So these vapors travel up, come through the still, condense back down, and we will continue this cycle of distillation. Um, whether it's through the column distillation, which works a little bit differently because the column still will have a series of, just exactly like I said, columns, these tubes, right? Now we are adding in the fermented mash here and through here there is a bunch of these perforated plates. I'm injecting heat through this direction, stripping off the alcohol Alcohol is coming back down here into through here. That's the basis of distilling. Um, all different types of styles of spirits will be the degree to which they are distilled, the raw ingredients which they start with, or the kind of flavor ingredients which they end with, whether it's grand wormwood with absinthe or whether it's juniper berries with gin. So they'll go in at like the final distillation. So like with the absinthe, for instance, you know, I'll distill four times to have this clean spirit. And then I'll add in uh, the gram wormwood, the fennel, the, uh, the genipi, all these other elements, and distill that one more time. That'll produce the scented spirit of the absinthe. And this is still clear. And so I actually take a portion of that, put it back into the still, and basically create like an alcoholic tea, an herbal tea, which is all alcohol, 146 proof alcohol. But I won't heat it up to these vaporization points, so I'm not distilling it. I keep it kind of a lower heat by comparison. Strain that out and have this like very concentrated, like vivid liquid. Put that back in with the clear stuff and allow it to age for a period of time. And that's the kind of the basis of how we make absinthe. Yeah. Any other questions or on to tasting? Shoot. When you mechanically construct the still, how do you prevent uh, too much vapor from escaping without condensing or condensing too early? Okay. Which part? Column or pot? Uh, either one. Okay, let's go with pot. Let's go with pot because it's the easier diagram to look at for everybody. So, your first part of that was talking about how do you uh, prevent it from escaping? Escaping as vapor, yes. Okay. Your first part about preventing escaping as vapor inside here is a basic shell and tube design condenser. So, I've got water going in here, the coolest part on the bottom, warm water coming out the top. So that's how I'm constantly cooling, right? So in terms of vapor escaping, so to speak, we are constantly cooling. This gets turned on when we reach the vaporization point of 78.3 degrees here. 
because up here we're still only at that time at that time on my pot still I'm at still maybe only like 4850C so I'm not at a vaporization point or anything I'm extremely concerned about now talking about how to keep any of these other vapors in we have here 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 and here, they are ANSI style flanges, 150 pound flanges. Um, they're called 150 pound flanges, just kind of more an indication of design, not their weight. And what they basically are is this flange like design here, here, there is a gasket material in between, but within that flange, this is the metal portion that kind of comes up through the flange. And that metal portion is then squeezed between that gasket with the bolts keeping that together. So in terms of all those particular points, that's where that's how we kind of keep that system very closed loop.